Hi everyone, uh, I'm Alfred and welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing. I'm currently sitting in a bunch of technical difficulties, which is kind of a pain in the butt, but I can't really help it right now. Um, it's been quite a while since I've actually recorded Kingdom of Loathing. I believe, well I guess you might be able to see by the date, but I think it's been about a week since I've really properly sat down and recorded it. I could go check, but I won't. I've done a bunch of grinding off screen. I have done. I did a bunch of grinding off screen. Um, I found Spooky Raven's gown. I found one of the spirits on the... Let me find it here. Oh, Lord. Yeah, the gauze immateria. A small spear of the purified essence of gauze. It's wispy. Um... And I uh, also ground a bunch on the orchasm. So uh, I'm kind of just going to finish like a couple of quests this episode. So buckle up. All right. You throw away the rest of the smut orcs, terrible building materials. Good riddance. And huzzah, the bridge, the bridge is finished. So um, as I mentioned, this is going to be an episode where I finish a lot of stuff. Um, I'm level 10. The game kind of starts to run out of stuff for you to do at level 13 or so, uh, which means that we might be getting near to the end. I kind of intended to stop this after a little bit, but I might just run out of the game to play. So we're going to go ahead and cross it. So we got Abu Peak, Twin Peak, Oil Peak, and the Highland Lord's Tower. Faction Traction equals Inaction. You stand at the bottom of Abu Peak and look to the top, trying to find the signal fire. The whole peak is covered in memorials, tombstones, and ghosts, though, and you can't think of how you'd begin to get all the way up there. A plinth at the gate to the peak bears a plaque that reads, Site of the Dreadful Five Faction Wars. On this spot, five armies did clash in a century-long war to establish which faction's hero would be proclaimed Hero of the Peak. The combatants were the Bat... Batleys... Oh boy, who chronicle who followed the chronicles of Duke Scar Star Killer in his galaxy battles, the Duskwalkers, who followed the chronicles of a shiny vampire Jared the Duskwalker, the Watsians, who followed the chronicles of a time traveling alien known only as the Professor, the Space Tourists, who followed the chronicles of Captain Kirkhard and the Space Tourists, and the Claybenders, <laughs> chronicles of the teen sorcerer Gary Claybender. Their ghosts still haunt this accursed battleground. Oh, man. You're fighting a claybender sorcerer ghost. A, he a ghost rises from a tomb in front of you, wrapped in a black robe. We all died defending this peak for the one true hero, Gary Claybender, and you shall not defile it. Calm down, buddy. I just want to light the signal fire, okay? Never! The ghost rages a magic wand. Dis Disrupto respirium! A beam of light hits you from the wand hits you in the sternum, making you gasp for air. Knock it off, you ectoplasmic bastard. You plant your antique spear firmly at your feet, then use it to brace yourself for a flying kick. You do all that damage. The ghost tries to swoop through you, but you insist it by you dinner first. You grab the end of your antique spear, hold out in front of you, and spin around in a circle, hitting it twice for not a lot of damage total. You feel vaguely like a martial arts adept turtle. <laughs> Uh, the ghost tries to smack you, but its hand goes right through you. Ho, oh, ha-ha, guard, turn, parry, dodge, spin, ha-ha, thrust. We do all that. We win the fight. So I actually wanted to mention this. Um, oop. Beep. All right. So we've got this antique spear now. This is a heavy, unwieldy spear, rusted metal pole with a heavy, unwieldy, rusted metal spike on the end. Stabbing something like with this will probably give a tetanus. It's like adding lockjaw to injury. So it does 15 to 30 damage. It makes me slower, but every successful hit weakens the opponent, which is why I really dig it. Um, and now I'm wearing all these clown things. I am 75% clowny, I believe. Yes, that'll help me get into the uh, fun house, which I have been forgetting to do quite a lot. You're fighting a space tourist explorer ghost. A poorly mustachioed ghost in an origin black uniform appears on headstone in front of you. Alas, laddie, the ghost says, I could not defend the peak for the honor of Captain Kirkard. 
I tried, but I didn't have the power. You're one of the space tour guys, aren't you? What? Do you mean you aren't? Are you about that daft professor, that wimpy Jared the Doskwalker? Well, beating you doon is the one thing I do have power for. So naturally, this is all fandom drama. Well, look at that. And everyone is a combination of two different fandoms. You're fighting a Watsian commando ghost. Oh, it's just the TARDIS. So naturally, um, Claybender is Harry Potter. And possibly Airbender. Um, Jared the Duskwalker is Twilight and Blade. Space Tours is transparently uh, Star Trek. Space Wars is, or whatever the hell they call it, is Star Wars. And this is Doctor Who. And possibly Torchwood. A handsome male ghost in a gray wool overcoat rises in a grave from a grave near you. Well, hello there, he says in a manner that indicates more than a friendly greeting. What faction are you in, then? I'm pretty sure you're not a follow of the professor like me. You've got enough, you're pretty enough to follow Jared the Duskwalker, but you've got a cool nudie vibe like a space tourist. So maybe it's Captain Kirkard that gets your naughty parts tingling. But you've got to admit, Duke Starkiller is, Star is a fine-looking guy, no matter which way you swing. Are you hitting on me, you ask? Well, I'm mainly sizing you up for a fight, but I'm not ruling out any options, he says, flashing a naughty grin. You step close to it and spin your antique spear, whacking it six or seven times for that many damage. Your opponent brushes up against the hot plate. A rhino-headed alien materializes between you and the ghost and gores you with its horn. Right, the horn. A little robot dog materializes beside you, but you just pet it behind the sensor array and offer it a ram chip. Cool. A female ghost in a skin-tight purple jumpsuit rises from the grave and stares at you with huge dark eyes. I sense turmoil within you, she says. I sense you are not a follower of Captain Kirkard as I am, and you're therefore not one of the space door faction. I have an overwhelming feeling that you will scream like a little girl when I disembowel you. It sets its phaser on tickle. <laughs> it tries to transport you to outer space, but the transporters are offline because the lithium something or other. By the way, if my uh, audio sounds like garbage, it's because um, I'm currently having issues with my recording and I can't actually check how I sound until I go to edit it. It's really annoying. You're fighting a Dusk and Raider ghost. A pale female ghost rises from a grave and looks at you with glassy eyes, biting her lower lip with her huge front teeth. You're... I... She says, heavy pauses weighing down the conversation. Jared the Duskwalker, I... Do... You... Look, you're going to have to speed it up a little, you say, which seems to make her angry. You get the jump on her. All right, you back up a few paces, get a good running start, and then it's lunge, thrusts, and smack. All right. We got an Abu Clue and a Duskwalker syringe. Let's go take a look at these. Oh, yeah, I've got clown skin. And I've been running the daily dungeon as well. All right. Oh, and these. Duskwalker syringe. A syringe used by Duskwalkers to convert others into creatures of the twilight, and I can't stress enough. And I cannot stress how lame it is to inject someone with vampire. I know we keep coming back to this, but damn. Manufactured to work best with Duskwalker venom, but it can probably draw out anything else sufficiently crude and oily. <laughs> Abu Clue. A map that reveals the location of one of the ancient battles fought atop Abu Peak. No one knows why it has a bright blue paw print on the back of it. <laughs> You look at the map, it's pretty easy to understand you, so you commit the location of the battlefield of memory. You should go to a boot peak and check it out. Having served his purpose, the clue emits a ghostly wail and vanishes in a puff of ghostly smoke. Alright, you follow the map to the battle site. This one's in a weird little box canyon on one side of the peak. The snow's melted here, revealing an otherworldly landscape of craggy red rocks. It looks like the surface of a planet unimaginably distant from this one. Or possibly somewhere in the arid, extra dyed, dry desert. There's a shimmer in the air in front of you, and a space tourist warrior approaches. He's got pale skin and yellow eyes, but he looks otherwise human. Rather than thrusting your fist against him post and insisting you don't see him. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. You approach the ghost. So are you human or... I'm an artificial life form, he responds, what you might call a robot, though I uh, prefer the term android. However, I assure you that I am fully functional. Uh, congratulations, you say. 
The android steps close to you. I believe you have failed to interpret my meaning. I am fully functional. Any operation, calculation, or sexually leisure activity that a human can do, I can do better. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's the square root of 256, you ask? That's a really easy one. The android steps still closer and throws an arm around you. No, I mean, I am fully functional. Do you clean your pants with glass cleaning spray? Because I can certainly take them off. I can certainly imagine myself taking them off of you. The wool. Okay. No, thanks. You say. The android stands there for a moment, head cocked at an unnatural angle, fully freaking you out, uh, before it transports to a different quadrant. Let me see if you can even see down there at the bottom. Nope. All right. I guess you'll have to take my word for it. For another in the box canyon, you see two space tourist soldiers locked in a battle with each other. Yeah. This is up here and then down here. One of them looks kind of like an apathetic li lizardman, only less apathetic and full more full of rage. And the other is a bald, pudgy guy and a toupee girl. All right, cool. You guys can see that one then. The lizardman falls to his knees, and the pudgy guy lifts up a rock to slam into his head. But the lizardman suddenly vanishes. He's gone, the pudgy guy says. Then he drops to his knees, grits his teeth, screams at this guy, gone! Then he vanishes as well. This is a little over the top and terrifying. Wow, they're losing a lot of hit points. I wonder why. You walk to the end of the canyon where there are a few normal looking guys and a couple of big, couple of guys with bony ridges on their heads standing around deep in discussion. Let's listen in. True grab-ons have n honorable bony head ridges, one of the weird-headed guys said. And the other nods in agreement. We're just as much grab-ons as you are. We just choose to have fashionable heads, hairstyles instead of looking like someone glued, stuck some rain dough to our heads. The others respond. You are without honor. The other rich head guy says, whipping out a sword that looks like someone glued a bunch of rages to an archer's bow. The others follow suit and they start whirling their improbable weapons around their heads. In a few minutes, the rich headed guys have managed to cut themselves to pieces and they vanish back into the ether, howling with rage. It's pretty spooky. Climb out of the canyon to see a space tourist landing party exploring the terrain, pointing at their little beeping handheld scanners at everything. One of them points their scanners at you and says, Are you classified as human? Dang. As far as I know, I'm human, just like you. <laughs> the landing party looks at each other, nonplussed. Who are you calling human, one says. Do you not observe the slight crinkling in the flesh above my nose? I'm clearly an alien life form. Yeah, and I have thin, ropey sinews connecting my head and shoulders, the other another says. So exotic. All right, and one of my earlobes is at least five millimeters longer than the other. We're far superior to you, mere human. All right, you say. You're definitely a group of terrifyingly exotic aliens. I sense sarcasm, the guy with the earlobe says. Set phases on pants wetting terror. Landing party shoots terror beams at you and transports out while you convulse. Jeez, a lot of hell. Um, I'm going to go here while I'm resting. Because I think there's something I've forgotten to do. I've forgotten to talk to anyone else. Yeah? Yep, I totally forgot to do that. Guess what? All right, cool. I utterly forgot. Radical. What about Torg? All right, nothing yet. I'm waiting for this. I'm waiting for double fisted, double fisted skull smashing. And while we're here, I can also go bang around uh, this area. As I mentioned, it's um, well, I actually mentioned it hours of real time ago, but uh, haunted gallery, right? Oh, right, I'm supposed to read this. You grab onto a banister and monkey bar your way up the staircase. You step up the stairs and through a doorway and find yourself in a small diner. The place is empty save for two men and a woman sitting on the counter, each staring gloomily and silently in this face, while the streets outside are empty and dark. You take a seat, and the attendant pours you a cup of coffee. What can I get you? He asks. What's the special today? He shrugs. The loneliness and ennui of modern urban life at the side of fries. Uh, just the coffee, then. After a while, the leaden atmosphere starts to get to you, and you duck outside and only find yourself back at the stairway. That's that, um... That's that one painting that's really iconic. Yeah, I nailed it. But that is... That's a painting. You dash up the steps just before they... 
<laughs> dissolve into a flock of birds. Talk about a flight of stairs. Uh, I think I've been here before, so I'll actually just head this way. I read this one as well. You step off the you the stairs turn into a slide and you slip down them, but somehow you end up a story higher than you were before. You step up the stairs and through a doorway. Inexplicably, you find yourself in the middle of a green field. An apathetic-looking naked man lands on top of a hill, conversing with a hovering gentleman with a white beard and robe. What do you mean you're bored, says the man with a beard. I mean, there's nothing here to do, says the naked guy. There's green fields everywhere, and all these stupid animals. I mean, I thought of names for all of them. I kept him busy for a couple days. Now what? So the miracle of life and free will isn't enough for you? What good is free will from just scratching my butt and taking naps all day long? Look, can't you make a bar or some chicks or something? I'm not waving a magic wand here. This creation stuff is complicated. The paperwork is unbelievable. Two men grumble and pace about for a moment. You start to duck back into the door before you spotted. As you leave, you hear the bearded one speak again. Hey, Adam, what? Pull my finger. Also, that's the Sistine Chapel there, but backwards. Whoa. Instead of taking the staircase, you instead sit still and wait for it to topologically invert itself. You step out of the stairs and through a doorway and find yourself standing next to a small pond near a farmhouse. The farmer has somehow gotten his cart stuck in the middle of the pond and is arguing with his horse, who doesn't seem inclined to move. You need, like, you need a hand with your cart, you ask? Hi, Wayne, he replies. Uh, hi, but my name isn't Wayne. What? No, I mean that. Never mind. Yes, if you can get me out of the sink, I'll be applying. Dern Long Sprinkler stu uh, sprung a gasket and flooded the yard. You help him push his cart to dry land. It's a pretty good workout. You leave through the doorway you arrive through and find yourself back in the gallery. Wow, that's a lot of muscle boundedness. Empty suit of armor. This is actually where I got the antique spear. I believe I've fought everything in here before. Yeah, with a pitchfork and his wife. You know, just to make sure I'm not eating up too much time. Oops. Okay, cool. As I was saying, just to make sure I'm not eating too much time. All right. Now, what the hell am I looking for? Her shoes. Wow, I actually have to do the thing right? Oh, man. Keep choosing the middle option until you encounter the persistence of memory. Okay, well, I can do that. Oh, we got a level. Look at that. Cube is bull. All right, I'm going to finish out this quest now that I know what the hell I'm actually doing. My apologies for just spoiling myself. Oh, another antique spear. Nice. Cube is bull. A broken sword. End of the drawing. All right. You watch a worried looking teenage girl chase a blonde rock star around the stairs and ledges in the distance. She reminds you of someone and I can't remember here. And these people love Labyrinth. Step up the stairs into a doorway, which leads to a meeting hall. A dozen or so guys are at a long table having dinner, which all of them on the same side of the table for some reason. As you pass through the hall, you overhear the two guys conversing at the end of the table. All I'm saying is, wine, okay, great. Everyone likes wine. But bread? Come on, bread's so boring. Who wants to be remembered for bread? I go for like a cheeseburger or some pizza rolls. These pizza rolls are my body. Eat them in remembrance of me. Are you kidding? That's utterly tacky. We're trying to establish something classy here. I suppose you'd prefer this filet mignon garnished with sautéed onions and crumbled blue cheese and a shrimp cocktail on the side as my body, wouldn't you? You're so pretentious. <laughs> That's great. That's actually radical. You stand still until the stairs rearrange themselves such as where you want it, where you want it to go. And then this is the swatches one. Venus again. I've been here. Puddle of clock. I think I've been here, right? Wait. 
the persistence of memory painting. Oh, right. Okay. Persistence of memory, southeast. Yeah, through the power of cheating, I'm unstoppable. You step off the stairs into a large room filled with little girls in ballerina outfits. The girls are paying various amounts of attention to dance instructions being issued by an extremely short man with a can. You take advantage of the relative inattention of the nearest girl, whose feet are coincidentally the same size as Lady Spooky Ravens. Cool. Spooky Ravens' ghostly eyes meet up at the sign of her dancing finery. She grabs it from you and excitedly shouts, meet me in the ballroom in five minutes as she darts through the wall. Cool. I'll pop out back to here. Can I get anything? Let's go with Rage of the Reindeer. I am just short. Damn. Ah, uh, it'll be a little bit. Okay. On a ballroom. Having a ball in the ballroom. Ghostly strains of organ music, or perhaps strains of ghostly organ music, gently and creepily caress your ears as you walk into the ballroom. You see rotting streamers festooning the walls and a table with an empty, dusty bunched punch bowl, rotting those hors d'oeuvres and a giant cake that would make Mish Havisham turn green with envy. There are couples in various stages of decay, from fresh zombie to ancient ghost, and they're all waltzing the night away. Feel a cold hand on your shoulder, and a voice says, May I have this dance? You turn and see Lady Spooky Raven herself, or the ghost thereof, hovering beside you. Uh, sure. But I kind of have two left feet. I don't mean me metaphorically either. It's a pretty serious deformity. Lady Spooky Raven laughs softly. I think I'm beyond worrying about someone stepping on my toes. You go out onto the dance floor with Spooky Raven, and waltz, foxtrot, and box step until you're about worn out. Dancing with a ghost is kind of a workout, both physically and mentally. You have to make sure not to commit the faux pas of accidentally stepping through your dance partner. But when you step off the dance floor as the song ends, all the specters and various dead and undead partygoers applaud. We got a bunch of stuff. Cool. Zombie waltzers. Okay, that's everything then. All right. That's a... That's a good... Oops, Big Raven's Ghost. I was going to say. That's... We'll come back to this. Messages. Hurry, quickly, to the third floor of the manor. We'll uh, we'll come back here later. Just, you know, because. Any whoozle. Um, that's been Kingdom of Loathing. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm going to just guide my way through all these quests and finish them out. I'm not going to do every quest. Um, play the game yourself. I implore you, please, just play this game. It's so great. I It comes highly recommended. And I know I've said that every episode, but I am playing a free game for a Let's Play channel where I can potentially make money off of it. And that's kind of not fair to them. I, uh... So I, I want to... If I, if I have any sort of success with this, I want to just have more people play this game. This game is so awesome. Um... But yeah, uh, this has been King of Loathing. I've been Alfred. Stay curious about the future. Remember to wash your hair. Because I haven't been. Got a greasy mop on my head.